Dear colleagues, welcome to my workplace at Ranakhat, West Bengal, India. This surgery has several challenges. Heart cataract, nuclear sclerosis is in grade 5, small people and floppy iris. The patient is 85 years old man, takes temsulosin for BHP, benign prostatic hyperplasia, has heart disease, takes some medicines for her heart disease. So a lot of comorbidities. I have taken up this case for surgery. The surgery is minimally edited and it is going to take a long time. The surgery time was 20 minutes. It has been edited to 16 minutes, minimally edited. And if you want to watch the full surgery, you have to make this time and watch it carefully. Main incision 2.8 millimeter has been made mid limbal and side port is about 1.6 millimeter and it is about two and a half to three clock hours away from the main incision. Tripon blue dye has been applied under the iris. Both adrenaline and phenocaine has been used but people doesn't dilate. The size of the people is about 3.5 to 3.75 millimeter. Not enough to manage this black cataract. I am injecting visco under the iris. Some visco over the iris and some under the iris so that a space is created behind the iris. My plan is to use a people expansion device and I use B hex. B hex means Bhattacharji hexagonal. Invented by Dr. Subhan Bhattacharji, a hexagonal people expansion device. No joint is made of polyamide. As I go, I tucked the flange at 1 o'clock first, then I tuck the flange directed at 7 o'clock. So through the main incision, I have tucked two flanges. Now I go through the side port and hold this flange directed towards the main wound and it is this flange is stuck. Three flanges behind the iris, three above the iris, a uniplanar device and the people has taken a hexagonal shape. Size of this people is about 5.5 millimeter. I'm removing some cotton fibers by the BHEX forceps itself. And now time for capsulorexis. My plan is to do a 5.5 millimeter capsulorexis going along the border of the hexagonal people. So go in some places it is under the iris. In some places I can see it is at the corners it is visible and again some places under the iris. Thus I get an adequate size trixis of about 5.5 millimeter to manage this hard nucleus. Unless this size of trixis is obtained it's difficult to manage this nucleus. There will be a lot of genular stress and a lot of other complications can occur. Hydrodissection is done at multiple points. Small amounts of BSS is injected. The nucleus is nudged and ultimately the nucleus rotates. And now some visco to fill up the anterior chamber and time for introduction of the FECO needle. The machine being used is Faro's from Oatley, Switzerland. The beautiful machine, no financial interest, but I am very happy and in hard cataracts, 
if I use ultrasonic energy judiciously, if I do not come near the main wound, there is no wound burn. Some superficial cortical lens matter has been removed and now I am applying my submarine chalk technique. The fecal needle goes within the substance of the nucleus just in front of the main wound. It travels through the nucleus, full ultrasonic energy is applied. I am applying about 80 percent ultrasonic energy and the nucleus have got a very nice crack. I do not do lot of lateral separation here. I come to the other side, rotate 180 degree, sculpt once or twice and yes, I have got two heminuclei. Now this heminucleus, again I go inside this heminucleus and chop. The chopper is a modified Sinsky hook, it is known as Mohanta chopper is just a bit thicker and little bit longer than a Sinsky hook. And this is the other heminucleus, again I go through it and chop. So I have got four free nuclear fragments. I tilt the fragments and start emulsifying the fragments from the apex. Without using this people expansion device, we can manage this case, but it is going to be very risky. If we use iris hooks, we are going to cause some tears in the sphincters and cosmetically it is not as beautiful as this device. Whenever we use iris hooks, the iris is pulled upward, there is shallow anterior chamber and with this device the iris at its own plane. This plane patient has floppy iris but because I have applied the PHEX in the beginning, the floppy iris is taken care of before it causes any problem. This is the last nuclear phase. So far I was with 80 percent ultrasonic energy, 450 vacuum and 45 flow rate and during emulsification of the last piece I reduced the vacuum to 350, flow rate 35 and ultrasonic energy 70 percent. Slowly with lot of control keeping an eye on the anterior chamber depth, never going to periphery, never going to dangerous zone slowly and with lot of care for the patient, the nucleus is managed, posterior capsule is intact. Though there is BHEX, still there is some iris tissue incarceration at the side port, so I brought out the handpiece first. Whenever there is some iris tissue incarceration at the side port, remove the handpiece first, let the iris fall back and then remove the chopper. And now I am removing the cortex. I cannot see the cortex but with this motion, sweeping motion, I can catch the cortex and remove it. After injecting visco and implanting the eye well, I will check with an eye hook whether any cortex is remaining here and there. This is a 23 gauss Simco goes easily through a side port which is 1.6 millimeter and with only one side port we can manage this case. Even BHEX application did not require another side port. 
with main wound we could implant, we could tuck two flanges and with side port the remaining flange. Now is the time to implant intraocular lens. Visco 2 percent ASPMC is used to fill up the capsular bag and anterior chamber. The main wound is enlarged little bit. The main wound size is now 2.9 or 3 millimeter and this is because there is BHEX. The lens should not get the lens should be delivered beyond the BHEX like this. If the lens depresses the BHEX, then one part of BHEX will be below the lens, another part will be above the lens. In that case, we will have to cut the BHEX and remove the BHEX. And now the lens is in the bag. But one haptic is attached, sticking to the posterior surface of the optic of the intraocular lens. So, I just give a push here and the haptic gets detached and now the lens is nicely placed in the capsular bag. Now I am checking with a Y hook if there is any cortex remaining anywhere, any small nuclear piece remaining anywhere under the iris. No, it is not there. And now before removing the B hex ring, since this is a case of uh, floppy iris, patient is taking tempsilocin, I am going to remove the visco that is behind the iris, behind the lens, that is in the back. Because once I remove the BHEX, removal of this visco from behind the lens is going to be difficult because the iris will tend to prolapse through the main wound or through the side port. So I remove the BHEX and in, in this case I am planning if I can remove the BHEX under hydro, hydro explantation of BHEX if it is possible. So, I ask for the irrigating probe and as I enter into this, I find that the iris tissue is plugging the main wound. So, hydro implantation is probably not a good option in cases with floppy iris where the iris comes and gets incarcerated in the wounds. So, I give a bolus of visco and I remove the BHEX. No visco behind the eye will, but still I will again uh, give a wash behind the eye will. And now we must not hurry up. We have explanted the BHEX, but we have lot of jobs to do. We have to remove the visco thoroughly. We have to close the wounds nicely. We have to form the antechamber very beautifully and then we will conclude the case. The visco from the anterior chamber is removed. The people is round and no sphincter trauma has occurred in this case. I'm planning to go behind the lens. Yes, I'm giving a wash behind the lens. There is some iris stromal injury at the side port area, but this is very minimal and it is till not cause any cosmetic problem. 
And now, I introduce the aspiration port first and then irrigation. As I go with irrigation, immediately I start aspirating. And now, I close the side port, hydrate corneal stroma and the side port gets closed. The main wound has been constructed in such a way that it will not require hydration. Now, Simco is used to form the anterior chamber. It is much aspirate for some time, then I stop aspiration and just only by irrigation I form the anterior chamber and there is clean, clear PSS in the anterior chamber. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.